In this video, we're going over how to recreate the sand effect look from the Black Panther end credit sequence all completely within After Effects. All right, first let's create a new comp and call it original, and then we'll drag and drop in the image that we want to use. For this, I'm just using a PNG of a character that I found on pixabay.com, but you can use any transparent image that you'd like. Then we'll scale and position however we want it to be framed. And since this is a 2D flat image, we want to try and help give it the illusion of being 3D with a lighting effect. Let's add a CC light sweep effect to the layer and set the direction to give it some backlight and dimensionality. Then we can set the shape to sharp, the width to something like 500, the sweep intensity to zero so it doesn't wrap around the whole image, the edge intensity to something like 50, and the edge thickness to maybe around 12 or so. Then let's go ahead and create another new comp and call this one sand effect. Drag and drop the first comp into this one, and let's start the effect by roughening up the edges a little bit. Add a roughen edges effect and change the border value to something like 15 or 16, the edge sharpness to around 3, and bring the scale all the way down to 10 to give it that fine grain detail. Now we need to add some general rough texture to the character, so let's create a new solid and call it texture. Drag it to the bottom and then add a fractal noise effect. Let's change the type to rocky, bump up the contrast to around 150, and then under the transform tab, let's set the scale all the way down to one to make the texture super granular. After that, hide the texture layer and duplicate the character layer. Add a texturize effect and set the layer to reference the texture layer and set it to effects and masks. Then set the light direction to match the light sweep and set the texture contrast down to around 0.5. Then on the duplicates rough and edge effect, let's bring down the border just a little to around seven so that it isn't as harsh of an edge. Now we have a basic rough texture, but we wanna take it a step further by giving it that tactile sandy look. So let's do that by adding a CC ball action effect to this layer. We'll set the scatter to one so that the effect scatters out just slightly, but is still sticking to the character shape and then bring the grid spacing down to zero. Now it's really starting to feel like sand, but if we look at the original Black Panther sequence, we can see these specks of sand reflecting light. So let's do that by duplicating the layer again. And on this one, delete the roughen edges and texturize effects, but leave the CC ball action effect. Change the scatter amount to 20, then set the grid spacing to eight and bring the ball size down to eight as well. So now we have a bunch of spread out bright particles. Add an auto contrast effect to make the brighter specks pop and then add a glow effect and set the threshold to 90 so that only the brightest areas glow. Then set the radius to around five and the intensity to around two. Now we have a subtle reflective glow to our specs. Then to get rid of these extra specs we're getting around the character, let's turn on the preserve underlying transparency checkbox for this layer. Now, since we intend to animate this, it would make sense that the light reflecting off the character would be causing these specs to twinkle a little bit. So to do that, we can add a fractal noise effect and drag it above the other effects, then boost the contrast way up to around 500 and pull the brightness down to a negative value like negative 25, set the blending mode to overlay, and then to animate the sparkles, alt click on the evolution stopwatch and type the expression time times 150. Now the movement of the fractal noise effect is animating the bright specs over time. Then to help sell the effect even more, let's animate the backlighting to move across the edge of the character. Create an adjustment layer and add a CC light sweep effect. And then with the playhead at the beginning of the timeline, set the direction of the light a little to the left and add a keyframe. I'll set the width to be around 120, the sweep intensity to zero, the edge intensity to 40, and the edge thickness to 20 for the look that I want. Then moving the playhead down to five seconds or however long you want the animation to be, let's move the light sweep to the right back in the direction of our light source and add another keyframe. Now just to give it a little more dimensionality, let's add another CC light sweep effect and set the light direction to the left so that there's some light wrap around the other side of the character. But let's make this more subtle by setting the shape to smooth, the width really high around 900, the sweep intensity to zero, the edge intensity lower to something like 12, and the edge thickness to 20. And now that we have our character pretty much done, let's create the overall final look in animation. Create another new comp and call this one final. Then create a new solid and call it BG for background. And looking at the original, we have some different hues and brightness values across the background. So let's add a four color gradient effect and set each color to some different blue values. And then we can grab these position points and move the quadrants around to wherever we'd like. Now let's drag in our sand effect comp and set it to be a 3D layer and do any extra positioning for our framing. Then to give the overall image a blended color style, let's create a new adjustment layer and add a tritone effect and set the mid-tone to a bluish color. After that, let's add some glow to the highlights by adding a glow effect and setting the threshold to 90, the radius to 30, and the intensity to 0.5. Then duplicate the glow effect and leave the threshold at 90, but change the radius to 200 and the intensity to 1. 
Now to finish things off, create a new 3D camera and with the playhead at the first frame, set keyframes for point of interest, position, and orientation. Then move it to where you want the animation to end, in my case at 5 seconds on the timeline, and move the camera in on the Z axis and adjust the point of interest and rotation slightly. But not too much since this is a flat 2D image, it won't actually look completely 3D, so more subtle is better in this case. Then let's give the overall image some slight edge blur fall off by creating a new solid and calling it blur, then add a gradient ramp effect and set it to radial, and bump up the scatter to around 30. Then add a curves effect and adjust until there's a larger fall off from black to white. After that, hide the blur layer and jump back into the adjustment layer and add a compound blur effect, and set the layer to reference the blur layer and set it to effects and masks. With the playhead back at the beginning, set a maximum blur keyframe around 2, and then at the end of the animation set another to around 11, so as the camera gets closer to the character the blur grows out slightly. Then just finish it off by adding a curves effect and adjusting the contrast. If at any point you want to change your image, all you need to do is jump back into the original comp, drag in another image, position it, and copy and paste the light sweep effect, and since this is all procedurally done, it will automatically change in the final comp. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and let us know what other effects you'd like to see us make down in the comments below.